I don't know if you're like me or not, but I like to find out how, how things work or where different calculations and formulas came from. It's pretty obvious where the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle came from. 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Geometrically, it makes perfect sense. It's not as obvious where the formula for the circumference of a circle came from. Of course, you should know that formula to be 2 pi r or pi d, pi times the diameter. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the formulas that we learned in lesson 5-3, length of plane curves, to show where this formula for the circumference of a circle came from. Now we can't actually work with a circle in this particular problem because a circle is not a function. However, we can work on a semicircle and then just double it. A semicircle is a function. As usual, we want to draw a picture, which I started here, including our x and y axis. Now bear with me and uh, pretend that this is an actual semicircle. This semicircle is going to have a radius r. This is x axis and y axis. So this is my function. Hopefully, you know that the formula for a semicircle of radius r is y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. It's on the positive side, so there's a positive uh, sign on the square root. Okay, so we're going to go right to the formula for the lengths of plane curves, which is L equals the integral from A to B, the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared dx. In our case, L equals the integral from negative r to r, our starting point to our ending point, plus the square root of 1 plus the derivative of that bad boy. So I'm going to calculate that over here on this side. The derivative of this is, using the chain rule, 1 half times r squared minus x squared to the negative one-half times the derivative of this inside which is negative 2x. Let me go ahead and simplify that into a form that will be useful to us. One-half times negative 2 is of course negative 1. This is the 1 over the square root of r squared minus x squared and so in a simplified form, our derivative is negative x over the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, so it's not as simplified as, as I make it sound, but this is what we're going to use for our derivative. Now, we need to square our derivative. So when I put it in, I'm going to square everything. Negative x times negative x is x squared square root of r squared minus x squared times the square root of r squared minus x squared is r squared minus x squared. Okay. Now, here's where the things get a little tricky. We're trying to take the antiderivative of this thing. In order to do that, we're going to have to do some tricks because we'd really like to get rid of the square root symbol. So, I have a sum right here. 1 plus x squared over r squared minus x squared, which of course is a fraction. How do you add a whole number and a fraction? Well, you need a common denominator. 
And in our case, the common denominator is r squared minus x squared. So, check this out. I get r squared minus x squared plus x squared over r squared minus x squared.